Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk back today with another video. I know I just put out that video like a day or two ago talking about kind of where am I at. I am at in the channel, but luckily we had some fun stuff come out and I really wanted to talk about it. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to talk about the Azalea Armory deck spoilers that as over at Go Again Gaming amazingly spoiled, did a really great job. I'm going to put his video down in the description below. So please go check that out if you haven't seen it before you watch this video then come back and we'll kind of talk about it. But if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. If you're a long staying supporter, thank you so much as always. We'll get right into it. Uh, really quick, I know I put that video out like two days ago. If you haven't seen it, go see it on kind of my state in the game. I think one thing that's gonna help me be able to make videos more consistently is like, I wanna focus less on like meta stuff and more just on stuff that I enjoy in the game. I think that'll really help me. And let's call a spade a spade. Most people don't watch my content for high level meta, uh, I guess, opinions, which is totally fine. Uh, I want to kind of keep it to the stuff I just enjoy. So we'll get right into it. This is the Azalea Armory deck. Uh, they fully spoiled it again as it goes in gaming. Definitely go watch his video down below. I'll link it. Did an amazing job. We have a bunch of reprints in here, obviously, with a couple new cards. First, let's talk about the equipment. And then I'm also going to show a riptide deck and we'll talk about that here in a second i'm more excited about what this does for riptide than azalea sadly nothing against azalea just where my head's at um we kept f dealer in crow's nest we got a new headpiece target totalizer to action destroy this whenever an arrow with an aim counter hits this turn draw a card the main synergy i'm seeing with this is you could use this and flight path to like recur cards with death dealer um like being able to flip put an aim counter on a card you know destroy this say whenever a card with name counter hits this turn draw a card so like you know you're able to flip a card maybe with line it up you may turn a face down arrow in your arsenal face up if you do put a name counter on it uh you put that aim counter on it you pop your head piece and then you fire it whatever the aim counter arrow is and then you give it go again with flight path you draw a card if they let it hit then you draw another card with death dealer and you can kind of like you know get some good value there there's obviously probably better lines but that's just what my head went at first then we have hidden agenda first off this artwork is sick uh i love this art i i don't know if it's probably not gonna come in foil um but i can just imagine the foil in this card but it's the chess piece it's an instant turn a face down arrow in your arsenal face up gain one resource at the beginning of your end phase destroy this um arcane barrier one so they put like innate arcane barrier in the armory deck which i think was really really nice uh being able to give players access to that, which I don't think they had in the past with these d decks. So hopefully they were listening to community feedback with that. But what I'm liking about this is they included a card and we'll talk about the ability of that card here in a second, but they include a card called point the tip point. The tip generally hasn't been used in Ranger in general for a slew of reasons. Um, one, it's a really bad arsenal target. If you're not running trench, like literally this completely just like it's a dead card pretty much. Um, it also forces you to have a card face up and in certain decks at certain times with Azalea that was always somewhat sometimes hard. Like if you had an arrow that was face down, um, you know, and you had to make it come face up first or use Azalea's ability, what have you, right? There's a bunch of reasons why point the tip wasn't great, but they've put a lot of cards in this deck that especially new ones that turn cards face up, right? Um, the ability to turn a card face up with your chest piece, the ability to put a card face up into your arsenal with your arms, uh, the ability to turn a card face up from your arsenal with line it up. They have multiple ways now on top of Azalea's ability that automatically puts it face up and Death Dealer to make point the tip a little bit more viable, which is really, really nice. Um, so Hidden Agenda, being able to gain that resource, turn arrow face up, and then potentially give it like an aim counter or a point the tip. Um, and then use that one resource you gain, like something like Infecting Shot. This can be face down in your arsenal. You activate Hidden Agenda, turn it face up, gain a resource, um, play Point the Tip, giving it plus three and putting an aim counter on it. Um, and then you use that one resource you got to fire Infecting Shot. It gets plus one from the aim counter, plus three from Point the Tip. So you just had two card nine with threatening two more values. So this is potentially a two card 11 by just activating that one-time ability on your chest which is pretty nice uh, especially for an armory deck level thing so 
these two aren't i don't see getting a ton of play and like fully constructed but it's fine the next two i do see getting constructed play especially the arms um sharpshooter says action destroy this put an arrow from your hand face up into your arsenal with an aim counter go again we could talk about just this card for an entire video i will shorten it by saying i like this card in riptide it's able to be played in both barbed builds and death dealer dreadboard builds uh you could go like all in on barb castaway and really just like always have aim counter presence or you could try to run like a death dealer dreadboard build and use cards like sharpshooters and line it up and point the tip to be able to give those aim counters more consistently uh and that way you can like get aim counter support without having to run the aim counter bow right because that's always been the issue is barb castaway and sand scour great bow aren't the more preferred bows it's more so def dealer and dread bore. so being able to incorporate some aim counter inclusion while also sticking to the bows that you prefer could be really useful but regardless i think this could be used in pretty much any deck it's so good when you couple it with the new card stone rain um, but also cards like immobilizing shot um is going to be really really good for this card uh any zero cost like if i go over to my uh riptide build for a second cards like immobilizing shot like being able to activate you know let's say you have immobilizing shot i'm just gonna do random cards two lace for blood rots and a premeditate right on riptide or you could say azalea even it doesn't matter you can activate the arm piece uh load in a mobilizing shot right um put an aim counter on it and then pump all three bows with premeditate all of a sudden it's coming for four seven ten thirteen with an aim counter and you did that pitchless right so it's a four card 13 uh with three on hits or four on hits technically a ponder two blood rots and a mobilizing shots ability really really good when you couple it with cards like stone rain it gets even dumber right if you have the same exact stuff uh, that i just mentioned two laser blood rots and a premeditate you can activate your arms put stone rain into your arsenal it gets dominate because it has an aim counter on it when it hits they banish a card face down from their hand at the beginning of the next end phase they return it to their hand we'll talk about that in a second but basically this will come in for four seven ten thirteen dominate even on riptide with this new arm thing new arm so the arms are really good it's going to be really interesting because the arms is actually the most in my opinion actually the most competitive slot for a ranger right now regardless of the hero you're running because we have bullseye bracers which has always been really good it has arcane barrier we have long draw half glove now which is also super good to get around warmongers so this card kind of doesn't give you the arcane barrier that bolt bullseye bracers did it doesn't give you the ability to play around warmongers like long draw half glove does so you're gonna have to make a decision which honestly falls in line with what ranger is anyway it gives you toolbox decisions um so i'm really interested to see how this goes right now i have it in the main board because i want to try this but i do think out of all the equipment pieces this is definitely the most competitively viable the next one that honestly especially in riptide i think automatically just replaces perch grapplers like immediately is flight path um attack reaction destroy this target arrow with an aim counter gets going in um you're able to block one instead of two like perch grapplers but it doesn't go away after you block with it having battle worn one for anyone that's played ranger longer than a week you understand how good battle worn is or how good that just that extra little block can be uh in ranger so being able to you know have a semi block effect that perch grapplers gave you but also you're going to get aim counters so consistently now with all the support that it basically acts as a snapdragon scaler as it blocks one that's the way i look at it so really good for that they have a one of barbed undertow in the deck i think since miss Vale came out barbed undertow before miss Vale, barbed undertow really wasn't worth it the only time it was worth it is like if you're playing like a dromai or a guardian where like you can pick red or pick blue and it's obvious that it's going to screw them up whereas anywhere else it was kind of hard but with miss Vale vale being so prevalent and all three of those heroes being so big in the meta victor's really big who obviously plays blues azalea is really big who obviously plays reds you can really get this card aim counter support a lot more consistently now and be able to pick those colors with confidence and really stunt your opponent if you play this correctly and pick the right color against the right hero it's actually better than red in the ledger in some cases like against a guardian telling them they can't pitch blues like they probably can't do anything they're just gonna like maybe pitch to tectonic with a red and then arsenal like they actually can't play their turn out they can't even swing with the hammer because they can't pitch cards of that chosen color right 
Like tell him Azale- uh, Azalea who's running all reds, like you can't pitch a red to activate Death Dealer, right? Unless they have Tunic up, like they're kind of in trouble. So super really good on that. Um, most of all these are reprints. They have a one of red in the ledger in the list two for Azalea, which is really cool. And then three of them are the new cards, Stone Rain. I love this card. I'm really excited to see where it goes. First off, it's zero cost, which is amazing for Riptide specifically. <laughs> I know I keep going back to Riptide, but it's amazing in all the all the aim counter support because it's normally just a zero for four. It's textless if it doesn't have an aim counter, which honestly has been kind of the drawback for some aim support. And I'm going to go on like a, not a rant, but a little bit of a discussion here. I think they want Ranger to be centered around aim. I don't think that's like lost on anybody. And I think a lot of people have been not, fully and one before murky water came for riptide specifically people weren't fully on aim because you know if you have cards like a mobilizing shot which without an aim counter is textless it's just a zero for four stone rain without an aim counter is textless it's just a zero for four murky water um has somewhat text but it's pretty much two for six uh without an aim counter um stuff like that drill shot can give that right you have what i'm trying to say is you have some of these cards that are textless without the aim counter so people are always saying like why would i run a mobilizing shot and stone rain in azalea or a mobilizing shot in azalea and other aim counter support cards when i can just run red in the ledger sleep dart right uh fatigue shot all these toolbox arrows that already have good on hits so they've had to really make it to where it's worth it to run more aim cards even if they're textless without the aim because the payoff and the consistency is there the other thing that people are not complaining i don't mean in a bad way but they're like well i don't like it when it doesn't have a name counter i think that's like the balance of it right they don't want it to be too overpowered they can't make it to where aim counter cards are over rate with aim and on rate without it because then you just have an overpowered deck right there has to be a give and take for that if you want overpowered cards there has to be some drawback to it so regardless stone rain super cool card uh being able to give this dominate in azalea without having to use her ability is really really nice again if you use the arms i think the arms is the best synergy with it in this deck if you're buying this deck for the first time it just also gives now riptide has another access to a dominate card now he has murky water and stone rain to do dominate and i love how they're not going completely away from dominate they're just not making it as often Right, once Azalea goes and we have just Riptide for a little bit until we get in our Ranger, he basically has Murky Water and Stone Rain to help close out games, right? And Dominate is what it should be, which is a game closer, right? So Stone Rain's a really, really good card. Um, and then they kind of go through here. The last new card in the set is or in the deck is Line It Up. It's a one cost yellow three block that says your next air attack is plus three. You may turn a, a card face down. Uh, or you may turn a face down arrow in your arsenal face up if you do put an aim counter on it so again like i said earlier what's really cool about this is you can either go all in on aim with like sand scour great bow with azalea or probably barb cast with rib type or you can try to just run the really good aim counter arrows um like i'll pull it up on the fly here really fast um one of the rib type builds i just built is basically it's a death dealer build i'm not running barb castaway but what i am running is i'm running sharpshooters um i'm running flight path just because and then i'm also running uh point the tip because you need that aim counter generation line it up in the arms so i'm running you know three six uh seven ways to get an aim counter right and you could probably do more honestly um but being able to like just get that on-demand aim counter support will allow you to like run this hybrid while not having to run that specific bow if that makes sense so people are gonna have a lot of room for exploration i'm super excited to see where players go with it um but getting to my thing i know it's an azalea deck deck uh but for riptide me specifically there's been a lot of memes of like this isn't an azalea armory deck it's a riptide armory deck um and i can see how that you know that's a thing for me, I'm really excited. I'm gonna try a barb castaway build, full barb castaway build. Flight path is our. I'm not. This isn't a deck tech. I'm just kind of showing it. Flight path uh, and sharpshooters are gonna go in the deck. I'm still sticking with trench just because trench is just so good. It helps me get around warmongers. I can at least have a decent turn, I, especially if I'm losing long draw half glove to play sharpshooters. You know, I want to have that trench in there. Uh, 
for the deck itself, we included Stone Rain. We include a mobilizing shot for aim support. We have six infecting shots. I just like this right now because Prism, Enigma, don't like Blood Rot. Uh, it's, these cards can get super overrate really quickly. Um, and with the aim support, it's a little bit easier now. Uh, we're also running Murky Water in our aim package and then line it up. And then we're running other good cards in the deck. I'm still running three Bolton shots just to have a little flexibility on the go again, right? Because um, Bolton shot and Lightning Strike just give me a little bit more go wide potential. Uh, and then from there, it's pretty much all the normal good stuff that you see in AIM. Dead Eye is really good. I'm running a one of Cheeky Rain Razors just to get my opponent thinking, right? If, whether they see me pitch it or play it, they don't know how many I have in the deck. Obviously, if they watch this video, they will, but you know what I mean. Um, and then we're running the three good traps and Intoxicating Shot, which is a lot better now if you're going more pitchless. And then the sideboard, we have Barbed Undertow. This isn't good in every single hero, but it's still very good. I want it in the side. Same thing with Battering Bolt. And then our Trap Suite. Merc, Meyer, Grapnel, Balance of Justice. I do have Death Dealer in here for the Zen matchup because I think you need this incremental value against Zen. And then for decks where I really think they're just going to try to warmonger me to death, um, like they run three obvious warmongers in the main board or I, it's like a known deck list thing and I know what they have and I know what they're going to try to do potentially. I have Long Draw on the side, but that's basically what it is. I'll link this deck down below. Uh, definitely play with it once the cards are coded. Uh, or do it on Tabletop Simulator. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited for this. Again, go watch Az's video. He did a great job. Uh, let me know what you think of the cards. I think they're really cool. I love how LSS is starting to put, he not heroes, but classes on around certain mechanics. I think that's a really cool idea. Um, and I'm super excited to see where they go with it. But, you know, super fun stuff to talk about. Again, if you made it this long, deal with me for 30 more seconds. Um, Again, with the channel, I'm going to try to focus less on, like, you know, these heroes place this weekend. You know, if it's a big event like Pro Tour, then sure, I'll definitely talk about that. But I'm not going to do as much meta update stuff, more so, like, just stuff I enjoy talking about in the game. Like, right now, I bought the Bolton Armory deck uh, to get all the normal cards. I ordered some of the some of the uh, pieces like Soulbound Resolve and stuff like that. And I'm going to play with Bolton. So having some fun with that. Definitely will update you on that. Uh, Katsu and Zen. Zen's pretty much figured out right now for the most part. Obviously, th with the changes, some people are making some stuff, but for the most part, like there's not much to talk about from a content perspective. Same thing with Katsu. I kind of already talked about Katsu a little bit post bond. So if you have any ideas for videos that you want me to do that's not specifically meta driven, let me know. I'll definitely uh, look at them and take a take a look. But thank y'all so much for hearing me rant. I uh, appreciate it. Hope everyone's staying safe. Um, I'm in this course right now, and I'm just. I'm burning at both ends, but we're having fun doing it. Um, thank you all so much. Y'all have a great rest of your week. If you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If not me, it's completely fine. Go to another creator. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Go to Az. Please subscribe to his channel. Um, he did an amazing job. And, yeah, I'll see you all next time on TC Talk.